Welcome fellow Stardust. Are you ready for a scare? I see you've come back for more. If you're new here, buckle up. And thank you for joining me today. My name is Duray, aka Rainbow Fright, lover of all things dark, creepy, and weird. Today's movie review will be on mystery thriller, Clove Hitch Keller. Where are we going? Almost there, bud. This month's subscriber request comes from Anthony of Fever Dreamland Theater. His channel is dedicated to the Twilight Zone series, as well as other fun and bizarre movies. So be sure to check out his channel, and if you like what you see, subscribe to it. He's also part of the Cinema Squad, who I just did a live discussion with last Friday, which I'll leave a link for in the description. The Cinema Squad typically talks all things movies, but they don't delve too much into the horror genre. So it was a lot of fun to bring a little bit of creepiness and darkness into their show, shooting the sh Now, I thought I had already seen Clove Hitch Killer, but I must have been thinking of another movie when Anthony brought this one up, and I said I remember liking it. This was a first time watch for me, and I had a really good time with it, especially because it was based off actual true crime events. And y'all know I love me a true crime story, so I'm always all over any movie that is inspired by or is the actual account of true crimes that have gone down. Distributed by one of my favorites, I Have Saved Midnight, The Clove Hitch Killer is is the story of a young boy who starts to think that maybe his dad could be the one responsible for the murders that have gone down in their small town in Kentucky. After finding a risque photo in his dad's truck, he begins to investigate further and ends up wishing that he hadn't. Starring in this film, we have the ever so talented Dylan McDermott, who really transforms. He perfectly depicts your typical Christian family man who enjoys leading his Cub Scouts, but despite his charisma and charm, there's something creepy and obnoxious about him. We also have Charlie Plummer, who isn't a favorite of mine, Spontaneous, as well as Madison Beatty, who you might recognize from Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and an also talented Samantha Mathis. The first thing you notice about this movie is how beautiful it is. The atmosphere gives us a foreboding dread that doesn't really let up until the very end. The music adds to this in a big way. The long tonal sounds and sad violins give it an extra uneasiness and creepiness. All of these elements suck you right into the movie and keep you on the edge of your seat. It's easy to see that this is loosely based on the life of the BTK killer who was currently serving 10 life sentences for the 10 murders he was convicted of. Both Dylan's character, Don, and Dennis Redder, the BTK killer, were Cub Scout leaders, family men, and neither of their families ever suspected a thing. Also, both of them got off on voyeurism, wore women's clothing, and not only did they enjoy choking and tying up women, they also enjoyed doing it to themselves when alone. This wasn't a role new director Duncan Skiles thought was suited for Dylan, but Dylan was persistent, so he sent Duncan a couple of scenes of him portraying Don, and Duncan was sold. With Dylan's prosthetic belly, new posture, and pushed back hairline, he becomes somebody completely different than what we're used to. Because we know right away that Don is the serial killer that everyone is desperate to lock up, our focus is on his son, Tyler who along the way must make some pretty difficult decisions. While I really appreciated everybody's performance in this one and felt that the relationship between Tyler and his new investigator friend Cassie was believable for the most part, there were some scenes that did seem a bit forced. One example would be when Tyler follows Cassie into the woods. It looked as though she was trying to lure him in, but when he catches up to her, she gives him hell. Another instance would be when she goes to see him while he's at a Cub Scout meeting. That whole interaction just seemed out of place and like an afterthought. There were a few other moments like this that took me out of the film. There were certain things about the story that I couldn't quite put my finger on that made it just not entirely believable or fully satisfying, especially the end. We have another ending that brought it down a couple of notches for me. If you want to hear me talk about the ending, then stick around. <laughs> 
So in the end, Tyler ends up catching his dad who is in the middle of taking down his latest victim and holds his dad at gunpoint. When he popped his head into the room, I was definitely confused. So I was glad that they went back in time right away to show us how he was able to know what his dad was up to. And I really loved this interaction between Tyler and Don. I was nervous for Tyler. I didn't trust Don to love anyone but himself. And I was right. When he pulled the trigger on Tyler, my heart broke for him. That was just so jacked up. But after that, things get unbelievable again. Cassie doesn't call the cops to get justice for her mom or the other victims. And Don goes missing instead of being held accountable for his crimes, leaving behind a clean and pristine reputation. He's later found in the woods and his death is ruled a suicide, but wouldn't have investigators questioned the bloody bumps on his head caused by Cassie hitting him over the head with the lamp? And the victim Dawn tied up was still alive and heard Tyler say the word dad and would have been able to give information that would have let authorities know that Dawn was there. I understood the sentiment of protecting Dawn's daughter and wife from public scrutiny, but it really made for an unsatisfying conclusion even though the bad guy died. There's just so much about the ending that bugs me. Despite these negatives though, I do recommend this movie. It's beautiful and it keeps you engaged the entire time. You'll especially like this one if you like teen crime dramas. Clovage Killer earns three rainbow skulls out of five and you can watch this one on Tubi, Amazon Prime, YouTube TV, YouTube, Google Play, Apple TV, Vudu, Sling TV, and the Roku channel. And thank you, Anthony, for your request. I'm glad I was finally able to review your movie. And FYI, Stardust, I've got only five more subscriber requests before I transition into only doing patron requests. In order to put in a movie review request, you must become a patron on my Patreon page, which will also get you regular exclusive content and access to my monthly movie nights. I'll leave a link down in the description for my Patreon as well as my letterbox, which I am trying my best to keep up with. Well, thank you again for joining me today, fellow Stardust. I appreciate you being here with me. I'll be back next week with another video. So, if you haven't already, go ahead and hop on the Rainbow Fright Freight Train and hit that subscribe button along with the notification bell. That way you'll get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you liked this video, please hit the like button and share it with a friend. I hope I see you next time. Peace.